Ken Rall here for Scholastic Administrator, and I'm in Boston at Park Street School. And this is Manny Perez. He's with a company called Dymo Mimeo. Uh, what is your position there? What do you do? Well, Ken, um, I run the research and development group for Mimeo. So all of the product uh, from inception to uh, production, all that stuff, my group manages. Is it true you're, you're co also co-founder? Co I co am one of the founders right. of Mimeo, yes. Um, the entire product suite is called the Mimeo Classroom. We have individual products in that suite, but if you want to buy everything, that's what it's called. All right, we're going to take a look at those individual parts to this, but we're also going to talk about this as a whole. Okay. Now, Manny, I noticed this as you were putting this up, it's, and I took it down very easily, put it back very easily, and that's hooking up with you know, magnets. Uh, what if you didn't have a magnetized uh, metal background to hook this on? You're absolutely correct. We have two magnets in there. Um, most whiteboards, about 80%, have a magnetic backing, so for those users, you can just throw it up. If you don't, what we have is we have mounting clips with 3M sticky tape and a metal front. You put those on the bar and then attach that to the board. And then you can take it on and off and the mounting bracket will stay and you use that to attach to it. Most people will use it on a whiteboard like we have in front today, but um, what we really do is we turn any flat surface into an interactive surface. Now, uh, I also noticed that the pen is tucked in here nicely. Yep. Um, Anything special about that? Well, one of the experience we wanted for our users is that the pen charge at the board. So um, this pen, when you bring it close, it has magnets and it will suck itself in and start charging. And what we do by that is it's fun to put in and it charges right there and a typical user will never run out of battery power as long as it finds its home there you know, once or twice a week. So there's two buttons on here. Um, the first one, um, it'll allow you to do hover. Hover is what the feature when you're moving a mouse around but you don't have a button down. And then when you press the tip down, it'll do right click. And the second button will show and hide the tools and I'll show you some of that later. So it acts kind of like a mouse would? Yes. Two things about this. Yep. One is the pen's not going to get lost. Yep. The other thing is you don't have to line up any connectors in the, on this pen. You just put it in there and it automatically is hooked up properly for... Yeah, um, I mean, one of the reasons we do that is we don't want our users thinking about the technology or what they need to do. We just want it to be easy to use. So they don't have to plug it in or think about recharging it. It transparently recharges by just putting it close, sucks itself in, and it starts charging. So as long as they replace it, it yeah, gets charged. never have to worry about battery power. You know, the number one thing is that we turn any surface into an interactive surface. So one of the things when, we, uh, when we're designing this product is um, we, we kind of don't want to hide the technology, but we don't want it right in your face. Right. But if I turn it around, you can see that the arc is hiding. We have two ultrasonic sensors, one here and one here, and a recessed IR sensor. So when the pen goes down, it'll send off an ultrasonic and an IR pulse, 